Cat, it's Maximus here, this time just with a quick review and minor comparison of various silica gel renewable uh, air dryers or dehumidifiers. These are similar to the Dry Z Air, although uh, it's, I'm kind of surprised that the Dry Z Airs are so popular compared to how effective silica gel is. There is also a fundamental difference. These are silica gel based. Dry Z Air is calcium chloride, and you always kind of end up with an odd little film. Um, when you use dry Z airs, and I never liked them for that reason until I discovered these, and these really work. And as you learn about silica gel, uh, you find out that it's really the one of the best substances to use as a renewable uh, desiccant. You cannot renew dry Z air. These you can basically renew uh, many, many times, near an infinite number of times. Silica gel is in all those little packets that comes in vitamins and electronics. Uh, it really is silicon, like beach sand, and it's just processed in such a way that it forms a essentially a silicon and oxygen foam. And it doesn't absorb like, say, a kitchen sponge or a paper towel uh, absorbs water. How these work is it's more like a mechanical system. They have these little pack, these things are filled with the same kind of little silica gel spheres uh, that you would find in any of those packets. The little really clear spheres indicates that it's a particular type of silica gel with a very small pore size in the nanometer range. And so they work, and I don't know exactly how to explain it properly because I don't really understand, you know, the whole, you know, how the molecules work. But these crystals are essentially a foam, and they have, like a foam, if you were to take a piece of foam and actually cut it all apart around all the little bubbles and lay it all out in the sheet, you would find that it makes a huge sheet. There's a huge amount of surface area. And so when I'm looking online, I found out that one gram of weight of dry silica gel can have in excess of 8,000 square feet of surface area, which is really hard to imagine. But that isn't a lie. That's actually the truth. When I was looking up online is that these little crystals can have a huge amount of surface area. So the water kind of wants to be attracted maybe through capillary action, if I'm saying that correctly, to fill in all those little microtubes and pores and holes that are on the surface of the silica gel. And so it can absorb more than 50% of its weight in water, i.e. a gram of silicon gel can absorb at least another additional half a gram of water itself. And being silica gel, you know, it's very inert. Uh, it does. There's nothing that is off-gassed or emitted in any fashion. The only times these emit anything is when you're actually drying them out. And so that's what's really great. One of the things about silic gel, and you can do this for cheap at home, you can buy, there's a brand of cat litter called Amazing Cat Litter called in uh, these purple bags. And it's like 10 bucks a bag. And it's, you know, eight pounds of silica gel. It may not be quite, you know, there's different grades, may not be quite the same grade that's used in these, but it still works great as an absorbent, you know, often sold as uh, silica gel cat litter. And you can just uh, use that and it will absorb water. And then you can put it in the oven at 250 degrees for a couple hours and it'll dry it back out. The difference with these more dehumidifier based ones is that they add a colorant. Now, as far as I know, any of the ones that are in these more consumer products uh, are using a non-toxic kind of chemical. And, and the reason that is, is you can also use cobalt to get it to change color when it absorbs water. And I don't think they use that in consumer products because of how poisonous cobalt is. But when they're wet and they absorb moisture, they turn pink. It's kind of hard to see on that one. It's a little easier to see on this one. And as they dry out, they turn more towards the blue color. And so ones that are actually designed for consumer use are pretty nice. This one, you know, uses a slightly different chemical, but it's really dark when it's wet and then gets kind of orangish, pinkish when it's dry. So I've had uh, several situations throughout my life where I've had to store my tools, you know, uh, in a storage unit. Maybe not several, but a few times and uh, always worried about rust. And I tried those dry Z airs, and I remember that film, and I absolutely hated it. Those things were just disgusting, and then that whole tub just gets all disgusting. And I thought, there's got to be a better way. And I actually randomly ran into one of these things at a thrift store, and then in researching it, found out what they really are. They're silica gel, the chemical that changes color depending on whether it has absorbed water. And then these are just consumer little units. They have lots of vents, and they have a built-in just electric heater. 
and say on this Remington unit and on this uh, Eva drive, the plug is built right into it. And I will mention that I believe both of these units, they're both made in Taiwan. I think they're both made by the same company, even though they're, you know, obviously different. This is a Model 365 from Remington, and it's one of the smallest. This is a next higher capacity. It says high capacity, but it's not really high capacity compared to something that actually is high capacity. But these two smaller units, they just have a built-in power outlet, and you just plug them right into a wall or power strip, and they that heater uh, will provides enough heat for them to start to dry out. What I found is it usually takes about a day for the small heater inside these to dry them out, but you'll slowly see the crystals change color and then you're ready to use them again. So I'd put one of these in the toolbox and maybe a couple of others, uh, these others just around the storage unit and actually, they actually work pretty well. Uh, during the winter months, they would get uh, filled up with water in you know, a couple of days. Um, and I just plug them in for a couple of hours and they dry out and then you can reuse them. And it was actually really great. And that's one of the nicest things is that you can just easily take these, plug them into the wall and dry them out at your leisure. I will have to say that there is some other difference in the of these, which is like this Max Dry one uh, is really powerful. And this thing actually will dry out, dry itself out in like two to four hours. It's really surprising. I was kind of curious until I really started looking. And like this little Remington one, uh, you can see it's rated for only 22 watts. And they always warn you that and it's normal that mild heat is generated because that's what's inside here, uh, just a resistive heater. They don't have any LED lights letting you know they're plugged in, and I kind of wish they did. But you can always tell that they're working because they get warm. And then this Eva Dry is indeed a little more powerful. We can see its model number is the E500, and it has a 26 watt heater. But it's still, both of these still take about a full day. I remember picking this one up because it's significantly larger and heavier. I also like the fact that it had a convenient little stand just to allow it to. Uh, dry faster or self-renew faster also allowing it to absorb water a little bit more readily when you just have it standing up and using it in dehumidifying mode this one's a little different where you have to use an external power cord but i didn't mind that but what i did notice is that this one has a 70 watt heater so obviously that's uh, nearly triple the power of this and over triple the power of this one so and it really does dry out quickly so that'd be one thing to keep an eye out for if you ever see these out of stores, to look how powerful the heater is on them, that will dictate really how fast you're able to dry them back out. And they all work pretty well. It's just that when you have uh, lots of humidity, say a car with a leaking sunroof, uh, you know these things could absorb more. You know you would need multiples to have one plugged in and drying while you have another one, you know, in the vehicle. So they don't work super great when you have to, you know, deal with a huge amount of water. Uh, unless you have multiples of these, and that would be a situation where you'd buy the silica gel cat litter uh, just because you need to absorb a bulk of the most moisture. It's just difficult to tell when this the cat litter itself without weighing it uh, to see if it's filled up or not. You can weigh it by just taking the dry, freshly opened silica gel and putting it on some type of scale, and then periodic, you know, in whatever container you're going to have it in. And then periodically reweighing it, and as soon as it gets around 50% heavier, you know it's uh, filled up. And it's always kind of nice to have that more mechanical, just weigh it uh, to see you know whether you need to renew it. But once again, you know having it in self-contained units that change color really does make it simple. And these work really; they work excellent when they're dry out. When they have dried out. Uh, it just seems that they really want to pull any moisture. So any moisture that is in the air gets absorbed by this. And then anything, even cold surfaces where condensation might want to build up, the air is much drier. And so there just isn't the available moisture to cause condensation. And besides these, the only other real way to prevent you know, rust is through heat. Uh, and big welding shops that will have special ovens they're not super hot, 100 or 120 degrees or something like that. And all the welding rod will all be in those special ovens to make sure that they're absolutely dry. If you had a special seal container with these, it would also provide just about as much uh, drying protection. And that's another use for these is in sealed containers holding uh, stick welding rod. 
to prevent those coatings from absorbing any moisture and causing issues when you're welding. So these things, as I think about it, uh, really have a wide, wide, wide variety of uses. Obviously, you know, the Remington ones for uh, firearms people, and then a general, these are more for just general use, but they're just great for keeping tools. You know, if you have uh, a truck toolbox that has pretty good seals and you can dry these out and they'll help reduce rust of both the tools that are in your toolbox as well as the toolbox itself. If you've had a car that used to have a leak and you know you fixed it, but this these will work great in really pulling out the moisture, you know, deep within, say, seats or carpeting. Uh, this These have really worked great. Even if you have like some moldy, musty smells, that's because there's still some water sitting somewhere where it's just not able to evaporate. But when you use a desiccant like these, it gets the air so dry that it really wicks and pulls the moisture just out of wherever it's hiding. And so these also work quite well in reducing smells of molds and mildews and that kind of stuff. And just once again, the fact that you can plug them in and dry them out and just reuse them uh, virtually an unlimited number of times, uh, I'm just kind of surprised that they're not more popular. Although I understand the dry Z air because those, that's something that you fill up, uh, it dissolves, and then you throw it away and then put in more stuff real fast. But the, you know, you get a huge, those are terrible because you're throwing away, they're wasteful. And they leave some type of film. When that calcium carbonate evaporates and absorbs water, there is something that is put in the air. I don't really understand it. Um, but anybody who's really used dry Z airs knows what I'm talking about. And so that's why I recommend these well over any time. I've got threw away all my dry Z airs as soon as I discovered these. And basically keep one of these in your toolbox and plug it in every day as you're working with your tools and then unplug it and put it back in your toolbox. Uh, and you will have greatly reduced corrosion. And the only thing of note is they won't absorb water when they're too hot to absorb water. Uh, so that's one caveat is you, they won't work while they're plugged in. They have to be dried out and then unplugged and then allowed to cool off before they really do become effective. And so they all work pretty well. It's just the difference of some will have much larger, some are much larger sizes have much more powerful heaters so they dry themselves out more quickly. And some, of course, have power cords that you have to plug in with, and some have integrated plugs. One of the disadvantages to these integrated plugs i found is over time, uh, they, the little contacts and stuff that, you know, that they work on can kind of wear and give you some problems. And I've always kind of liked just this more traditional plug-in model because it's a, just a bit more reliable over the long term. Anyway, that was... Just a quick review of basic uh, silica gel de dehumidifier or desiccant, renewable desiccant devices. And they really do work pretty well. You know, if you've had some kind of, you know, spill, you can put one of these right next to the spill and blow a fan over it just so that the air is, you know, exchanging through the device a little bit more readily. Uh, it's surprising that you can just set this and a small fan next to a spill and it will still seem to pull out the water the wet area of the carpet doesn't seem to be you know damp for a couple days it's damp for half a day they're really surprising how well they work and one thing before i leave here is to mention is that when they dry out uh every once in a while you'll hear a cracking or popping sound and i'm not exactly sure what causes that but i think because sometimes water kind of goes really deep into the crystals and then when they heat up it makes steam uh, since the pores in these, it's like a foam, are nanometer size, the steam just can't escape uh, quickly enough. And so, of course, the pressure makes some of the crystals pop. And so that's one thing that I would mention is that the, the crystals do kind of break apart over time as you go through heating cycles. And I suppose after thousands or even tens of thousands of cycles, you know, as long as the heating element holds up, that these little spheres will end up breaking apart into a bunch of random pieces and may not have uh, quite the same absorbing power. But I'm not exactly sure. I haven't ever, ever used one of these where they've reached that point. I'm sure it'd take quite a long time to do so. Probably a lifetime. Anyway, that was just a quick review of these, just uh, showing how I might how I keep uh, various tools and other things uh, from rusting and keeping them extra dry. And these are the exact devices. These are just absolutely excellent. Um, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. But I really appreciate everybody watching. 
And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus out.